thanks for joining us again. This time we've got Casey O'Toole. He runs my linked solution. What does your shirt say, man? Talk data to me. Oh, I like that. It's kind of like talk dirty to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your mind, Tristan? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to shift that over to you, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we get a lot of uh, a lot of comments on it, but I mean, it's 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 key. I mean, like data, data is everywhere, and you, you know, he or she who owns the data owns owns the, the economy effectively. So that's very yeah. true, buddy. Very very true. Thanks for joining me. We have a lot of questions typically on LinkedIn, more like why should I be using LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn sucks. Um, <laughs> I'm not even on LinkedIn. Those types of thing comments maybe. And so one thing I learned from you guys is that I should be on LinkedIn. And the one thing that really took me over to LinkedIn and said, okay, I'm going to finally use this thing was when you said, look, Google yourself, right? And then LinkedIn was like not even on the first page. And then I Google you guys and LinkedIn is like one or two, number one or two. LinkedIn has a lot of Google juice if you set up your profile correctly. And I thought that was super important. So can you go on that and then we can transition over to everything else? Oh, now, now you're talking Google juice, Tristan? This is getting, <laughs> this is getting awkward. You <laughs> wanted to talk data, right? Talk dirty. Baby. That's where we go. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, it's, 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 so I'm not sure if many people know this, but LinkedIn actually leases um, Google's old search algorithm. So there could, could be something at play there, but effectively, yeah, you, know, you, you really want to take some time and fill out your profile comprehensively because, you know, when people search for things on Google, you know, search for your name or to search for like top realtor, you know, yeah. LinkedIn is one of the major platforms that, that populates. I mean, just search for, for anyone's name, like, um, that you think is a, is a professional in your community and their profile, their LinkedIn profile is going to pop up first or at least top 10. So yes, it's extremely important. That's awesome, dude. I'm actually doing that right now. Let's see where, where you pop up. Oh my gosh. I'm going <laughs> to, that you popped up first on, hold on. I'm going to have to show this. You must have searched top, top my link solution. I just typed in your name. Look at that. Would you look at that? This look, is all live, by the way. So, and you're first. So that just goes to, sh and dude, your website is second. LinkedIn is first. That's insane. I'm going to type in my name. Hold on. Yeah. Did I spell my name right? Yeah. LinkedIn. Lab code agents comes out first, but that's normal. But I'm second on. Okay. LinkedIn. All right. I want to go into profiles really quick and I want to show yours because if you're working on your profile to show up, right, obviously we're real estate agents. We want to showcase what we do, right? Which is real estate. So how, how would you recommend somebody set up their profile correctly on LinkedIn? What are the things we're looking for so that we actually show up first like this? So a couple things. So the, 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 the two main things are you want, you want to niche yourself as much as possible. And okay. then you also want to be comprehensive with using every single LinkedIn asset that they have to offer. So I'll talk first about the niche. I mean, so if you, if you look at my, my title, it says, you know, co-founder and partner of top producing real estate group servicing Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. I Got mean, that's, that's somewhat niche, but, but, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning that is like I'm using a lot of keywords, you know, top producing real estate cities, you know, Santa Barbara, Ventura. So that means if they search for top producing realtor in Santa Barbara, that's like metadata that, that Google uses to populate top producing realtors. So you want to be able to um, just kind of create a profile that would give you the best Google juice you can. And, and by leveraging like simple SEO kind of tools, you can do it very easily. So, um, I like that. And then and right. the other one was, which is like the whole comprehensive aspect of it. I mean, LinkedIn has so many, they call them assets that you can leverage in order to kind of define who you are, kind of create a profile. You know, it's not okay. just, you know, naming your, your previous two jobs and then calling it quits. You know, if you, and even if it doesn't have to do with real estate necessarily, you still want to put it down there. You would still want to have that you, you know, I taught English in Spain, that I lived abroad in South America, that you did all of these things because, you know, A, LinkedIn gives you more credibility by having a more robust profile, 
but also um, it's important because people then can relate with you better. I mean, I mean, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times people see that I lived in these different countries and they're like, oh, you know, where did you go to school in, in South America? I'm like, oh, well, it's, uh, La U, you know, which is like, a, then we have a conversation. Casey, like, wait a second. ¿Tú hablas español? Yo hablo español. No sabía oh, eso. Wow. No sabía. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a while. It's a little rusty, but no, I, I lived in Spain. I live in, in Mexico, and then I lived in Chile. So it's, you know, I, I, have, a, I have a mission after of, of Spanish abilities. Wow, uh, that's impressive. All right, tell me about the experience, right? Right here. This is one of those assets that LinkedIn has. Yep. So, I mean, add as much as you can, right? So you want to be able to, so I mean, personally, I put the fact that I'm a real estate agent first, just because I don't want any of our clients to think that I'm doing other things. So I put real estate first, but you know, I'm also the founder of MyLink Solution. And I'm also the general manager of this, this events company that we, we, we just launched. You want to have all that stuff. You want to have all your volunteer experience. You want to give testimonials. You want to receive testimonials. You want to join groups. You want to add your interests. You want to add your skill sets. You want to do everything. Dude, I love this. Uh, this is really good. So I think a lot of us, a lot of us just miss that section right there, which is awesome. Yeah. And, right, and, so and, we have, and we have a video too. So if anyone wants to like just message us or message you or me, I can send you a video that kind of goes through step by step. It takes about 10 minutes of like what, what, to, what to do exactly um, of how to enhance your, your LinkedIn profile. I like that. All right. So do you have a link to that so I can put that up there? It's on our, um, it's on our YouTube page, but I can send it to you as well. Send that over, dude. That would be really good. I'll post the link or you can post it up in the chat and then I'll copy paste it into um, into the Facebook community as well right now. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. All right. So let's go. Let's go deeper into this. What's that? There Sorry. it is. I see you. <laughs> I see you. All right. So a lot of people are like, okay, cool. I can tweak my profile. I can make that look better so that I can pop up on Google since LinkedIn leases Google search algorithm, right? So that's awesome. I actually didn't know that that was the reason. So thank you for that. Um, now, there it is. Good. Thank you for posting that up. Oh, so for those of you looking to enhance your LinkedIn profile, you just post it up in the chat, copy paste that one. I'm going to post it into the Facebook community as well. So dude, let's go into what else we can look at to be able to make our LinkedIn account better. And then I want to showcase what you guys do. But first I want to know, what can we do personally? So, I mean, use it, be active on it. I mean, that's, that's like, that's the main thing. It, it's people think that it doesn't do them any good. And that's mostly because they aren't leveraging it correctly, right? And then they go, well, how do you leverage it correctly? It's like, well, just start engaging with people. Um, so, you know, liking people's posts, commenting on, on people's posts, um, searching for local um, individuals that you want to be connecting with on a, on a regular basis. You want to just be on LinkedIn because LinkedIn in general is where professionals go to do business. You want to be there. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. So when we, we posted, I think you, you posted something recently, like who's, who's using LinkedIn on LabCode and a couple of people were like, oh, it's just a big, it's just a big spam, spam place. Or, you know, I'm, I don't really use it because I don't get any business from it. Yeah. And, and the one person that I'm like, okay, so, I mean, we hear this a lot, you know, I don't use it because all it is is like a big sales pitch. And yep. somebody and, did say that. Yep. Right. And, and, and I get it. I mean, if I look through my LinkedIn invitations that are coming inbound, you're right. I mean, I can tell which, which people are going to be the ones that are going to do a sales pitch. It's going to be the one that's like, I help local realtors generate more leads. And it's, it's that kind of stuff. I don't usually accept those as like connections, but well, go ahead. I'm going to show the post that you're talking about. So I posted this one a couple of days ago, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And I was just showing that how many people had viewed my profile, right? Because that's that's impressive. I want people looking at, well, who's Tristan, right? Because I want more real estate business, obviously. And then I want more followers, right? So you guys have been able to get me almost 12,000 followers in about a year, which is insane. Um, and then that's the one you're referring to. So 
You're right. There, there are some times when I go to LinkedIn and people like automatically message me and they're like, hey, you want to join EXP? And I'm like, no, no, I like EXP, but I'm happy. Uh, or, hey, you want to get a loan? Or, hey, do you want this? Do you want that? So I try to avoid those. It's true, right? Mm -hmm. But what's that process look like so that we can at least engage with the people that, that are more genuine? Yeah, so I mean, so, so by saying that you don't want to use LinkedIn because you're getting a lot of like sales pitches, is in my opinion, it's it's like saying I'm not going to use the I'm not going to use the phone call and calling it to call expires because I get a few spam calls or because I get a few robocalls. <laughs> like like I don't want to use email because I get spam emails. Like just yeah. because you get pitched on LinkedIn doesn't make it a negative platform that you can't leverage it correctly. It's like yeah, I'm like don't don't set up like a robo dial you know spam machine on for your calls, but you do want to be calling your sphere of influence and customizing those conversations for what you think they might need. You do want to be calling people and providing value and contributing to their, to their business in some capacity. So like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to do it wrong. You don't want to misuse it or abuse it, but you do want to use it. Right. And, and so, and so if you think someone's going to be pitching you on like the next minute, don't accept it. But don't let that prevent you from like doing it correctly. And you know, a lot of our clients that use our system, you know, we do it correctly. We we help find the right target audience for you, and then we customize a script that works really well. So you know, you can do it well, or you can do it spammy. You just, just got to do it well. You know, that's I'm gonna show people how to do it well to be able to grow your engagement on Instagram really quick. And so pay attention because I'm probably going to make a clip out of this as well. Uh, and then I'll, I'll repost it into lab codes. And then right after Casey, I'd like for you to showcase the things that you guys do to help with that as well. Okay. So I'm going to share my, my Instagram page. I'm sorry, not my Instagram page. Cause I do it there too. Um, but my LinkedIn page, here we go. Now, so this is the same thing I do on Instagram. It's the same thing I do on Facebook. All right. But I also apply this <clears throat> to LinkedIn because it works. So for example, I'm going to go to my, this is my feed right here. So Christoph Chu is a friend of mine. He posted this funny thing about <laughs> real estate. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, I said, huh, I love this. I just typed this in, right? I also liked it. So here's a process. Remember this process because this is going to get you more engagement. All right. I liked now that you have other choices, right? You, you don't have to just like it. You can, uh, you can also love it, right? Let's put a love. I commented, that's two. Now I want to also message him as well, right? I can also message him and that, that's gonna go another step further, right? So I'm gonna say, hey, Christoph, I wanna spell his name right because he's got a little bit of a different name. Hey, Christoph loved the real estate picture about values for homes. Hope you have a great end of the year, buddy. That's it. Now, I'm going to do that. Now, if this is your, this is a platform you want to go on. I'm going to do that for 50 people a day every day. But Tristan, that's 50 people. I don't have time to do that. Well, then you don't have time for social media. <laughs> if you want this stuff to work for you, you've got to put in the work. But can you tell me anybody that you know that's doing that every day in the morning or in the afternoon besides Gary Vaynerchuk? No. No. I mean, because if you did, your social would be like, whoa, this is amazing. Casey, can you believe how much business I'm getting for this? People are blowing up my LinkedIn, are blowing up my Instagram, are blowing up my Facebook. How do you think I get so much engagement? I take time to engage with people. I take time to make them feel significant because one of the six major things that human, it's the six major needs, the six needs of human, uh, of human beings, it's significance. That's like at the top of the list. They need to feel significant. Yeah. This is why social media is so amazing. So did you catch that process? I mean, like it, right? Let's go. I already liked Bill Kerbox. 
but he does video. I'm going to put a little heart. I already commented, but I'm going to comment again. Dude, love this video a lot. Then I'm going to go back. I'm going to be like, uh, let's, let's go into Bill's and let's message him. He's out of Malibu. What's up, bro? You're still killing it with video. Love it. And that's it. He'll probably message me in a second. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll remove that. But that's the process, Casey. This is the process that people miss. It's like, and then they wonder why, why are my social media sucking? Right. You know, it's, it's, it's a trip. I, I feel like there's just a further polarization as a result of, of COVID, right? I mean, I feel like people are a lot more attuned to automation. And so when they sent an automated message or an automated text or an automated anything, they're like, ah, oh, I don't like that. But yeah. at the same time, I think they're also way more attuned to like authenticity. Yeah. You know, and genuine responses, genuine comments. And so like, if you take, and, and like they're yearning for, they're yearning for this, for this connection. They're yearning for significance. So That's if you it. take it a second, and you just give them a little significance, like you said, it goes such a long way. I mean, um, so we, we did a webinar recently with this guy, Nick Brothers, who's out of Colorado. And he's one of our clients. He's like, a, I think he's just a, like a, a standard realtor, nothing like he's, he does incredibly well, but um, he closed five, he closed over 5 million in sales using our system within five months, I think like seven transactions. And, and I was interviewing him during this webinar. I'm like, how do you, like, what do you do differently than all, all of our other clients? Like our clients do well with our system, but they don't close seven deals in five months. And he goes, dude, really? I just, honestly, I just engage them on a regular basis. I'm on LinkedIn all day. I'm asking them about their family. I'm asking them about their profession. I'm asking them all the questions about themselves that they love answering. And I have like hundreds of like relationships on LinkedIn that I'm continually nurturing. And from there, just, leads to business naturally dude exactly and, and you know bill kerbox just messaged me back <laughs> I told you. so um that that's kind of funny because that's the way it happens is that significance factor so i'm going to ask some questions because it'll transition into exactly how you guys help and I'm going to ask Christopher's question first. Since more professionals use LinkedIn, does the content you post need to be more professional or can it be creative and fun? What do you think? So creative and fun is fine. Um, like I always mention this often, you don't want to be posting cat videos, right? But I mean, so for example, I can, um, I can share my screen, right? Yep, go ahead. I'll share my screen. So it should be professional yet engaging, in my opinion. So creative and fun, I think, is engaging. All right. So, so we did, um, in fact, our, our new social media partners um, both created this one, where it's a poll. You know, what matters most to you as a homeowner or buyer? Hold the like button and vote for your favorite option. Home I office, master bedroom. I got almost a thousand views from this post, and it's. It's, I mean, this is, this is professional, right? But it's also creative and engaging. And yeah. this compared to a cat video, yeah, you may not really get as many views of a, than compared to a cat, but it's not really the, the place for that, right? Yep. So you want to kind of create it um, professional yet engaging is our recommendation. I love that. All right. Great, great answer to that question, dude. Then let me see. There's a couple of more that I wanted to address. Uh, the other one was, Christoph, hope that answered it. Uh, so Bill's asking, what if you're not connected to them yet? So this is when I was messaging them. What would happen then? Can you take us through that process? If I'm messaging, I like, I comment. And then what happens if we're not connected yet? So you probably won't see their their profile or so you, so you can see their, their profile, but you won't be seeing any of their posts if you're not connected. Got it. Um, you can follow them and then you'll start seeing their, their posts. But in order to um, kind of start engaging with people on a more direct basis, mm -hmm. you need to be a first connection. So that's, that's why, you know, you have 11,000 first connections. I have 
you know, <laughs> well, this is come about 17,000 first connections. And so step one is to become connected to them. Step two is to then start engaging with them. Got it. All right. Perfect. Uh, Bill's saying, I see posts that my first connections comment on. Yep. Makes sense. Right? Yep. Exactly. So because they're, they're commenting on those posts, you get to see them as well. So it makes sense. Um, McKinley saying, what kind of content are you supposed to post on LinkedIn? I have shielded, I have shied away from posting anything myself because I only seem to see ultra professional accomplishment related posts. Uh, and then Christopher's asking another one. I have always struggled with what to post on LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram seem to have more of a creative fun element to them. Uh, so he also said, I love that because you answered both of those questions, but Casey, let's go into how you guys put content up for us as well. Do you have any examples of what you guys do besides that one example? Yeah, sure. I mean, so, so I've been learning a lot more about this recently and our, our social media strategist, Lauren, she's done an incredible job. Um, let me kind of share my screen again. I'll kind of get to some of our recent posts. Cool, cool. So if you were to simply do like this, I call it like a reactionary post where you're soliciting a reaction rather than just like a like or a comment. Okay. If you do this all the time, like the same sort of like, oh, pick your favorite house, pick your favorite backyard, pick your favorite whatever, um, mm -hmm. that can get old. So you want to kind of diversify your posting. And so what she does is she will research some of the top trends on social media and then she'll LinkedInify it, if that's a if that's a word. She'll like make it appropriate for LinkedIn. So, so for example, what she's doing now, we're going to be doing a really cool post. There's um like like how it or how it was and and how's it going. Have you seen that recently? No. I'll show you. Have you seen any of these posts? Show me, show me, show me, show me. No, I haven't seen those. Where it's like how it started, how's it going? Ooh, I like that, dude. I this like that. Is, this is like a trend that's occurring now on social media. And so what she's going to do is she's going to make that relevant to real estate and LinkedIn. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a post that says, you know, how, you know, how is the market, you know, how it was and how's it going. Right. So from 1950, you know, here's, here's what the market looked like and here's 2020, here's the market, here's what, what the market looked like. Got so you can like so you identify trends. This is like the next level stuff. I don't know how to do this. This is what our why I hire someone for this. But you you find the trends and then you make it appropriate for LinkedIn. All right. And where are you finding the trends? Are you going to places like BuzzFeed or what where are you Google Trends? Where are you going? Yeah, so I mean she's well. really everywhere. I mean, like seeing what's what's creating engagement on LinkedIn. She'll be checking, you know, Forbes, like, you know, the, the National Association of Realtors. She's checking a lot of different sites. Um, BuzzSumo, they can kind of find things there too. Yep, BuzzSumo, uh, BuzzFeed, Google Trends, we can do all that. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. I just wanted to get some names out there for people wondering where the hell they would have to go, right? Exactly, yeah. All right, cool. Very good. All right, so this, this is also part of what you guys post. Talk me through that process of how you what you guys do for, for the real estate community in the sense of, all right, I'm going to use my link solutions. What does that look like on the most basic level? Because, you know, it's about posting, right? <laughs> all right, cool. So I will give you the one minute synopsis. There's three, the three, three pieces of value. Our system syncs with your LinkedIn profile. Okay. We then find targeted audiences for you on LinkedIn. We then create customized and automated scripts We'll send out connection requests on your behalf to that audience okay. with follow-up messages um, that are customized to what you're trying to do. So value number one is you're getting direct messages and direct leads from within LinkedIn. Value number two is we are posting content for you on LinkedIn. So you're taking advantage of the, the increased network that you're getting. So, you know, you get about 500 new connections a month. Mm -hmm. so 500 people are now seeing content that we're generating for you and posting on your behalf as well. The third piece of value is the massive amount of data. And this, that's why I have like this talk data to me. I think, I think one of the most important things about our business is that we can provide you with a downloadable CSV file of all of your LinkedIn connections, which includes first name, last name, email, 
phone number, location, title, company, et cetera. And you can then use that data, put them into your newsletter, send them a happy holidays newsletter, whatever you want. Um, and you can leverage that data to use it however you wish. Invite them to your events, retarget them on Facebook. Data is power and we can provide that for you. So, you know, direct, direct leads, content posting, and then data. All right. So that's a lot, dude. All right. So let's say you're, you're also posting for us and you're giving us that data, which is awesome. And you're auto automatically connecting us to, to people around so that people can follow us as well. Right. Correct. Yeah. So, so once they connect with you, then they'll be seeing your content that you're posting. Right. All right. Cool. And, and, and it's, it's important to note that we're only really connecting you with the people that you want to be connected to. So, you know, for example, like prior to me leveraging this, our system, most of my contacts were my friends from graduate school down in San Diego, who I don't really plan on selling any houses to. But yep. now my 16,000 plus new connections, those are people that I want to be targeting on LinkedIn. So now it's, it's like, CEOs, executives, partners, founders of large organizations in Santa Barbara, they're the ones seeing my content. They're the ones hearing from me. So it's people that I want to be, be, be reaching out to. Got it. All right. So with that, the only thing that falls on us then is the engagement part. Like I have to go in there. Once this is all done, Casey, and you're doing this for me, I have to be the one that actually goes out there and and it connects with people and likes it, loves it, comments, and then go in and message people so that that content that I'm posting can be engaged on so that people can come back and be like, oh, Tristan's just nice. It's been a while since I connected with Tristan. They go and check out my profile and then they'll probably like some stuff as well. So yeah. that's so, that's really good. So speaking of Tristan, you need to, you need to reach out to Brittany because... We, we put you on a recruiting campaign and she messaged you back in January and then she messaged you again on Thursday. She wants to talk to you. She wants to join your team. What? Now you tell me? <laughs> I'm yes, joking. Sir. I'm going to go reach out to her right now. I'll reach out to her right now as you're talking, by the way. Do it. All right, um, Casey, quick question here from Monica. Researching trends, you mentioned something like Zemo. Is that correct? Um, what did you mention? Oh, Buzz, Buzz Sumo. Perfect. BuzzFeed, Buzz Sumo. Um, those are still some things you can kind of see what's, what's trending. Even yes. Twitter. Even Twitter. That's right. That's, that's true. Sprout Social as well. Mm -hmm. So you can look up that. And, and uh, on Twitter, just, just uh, hashtag trends and see what happens. Um, doing that right now on Facebook to see if you can also do that. On Facebook, sometimes you can. Sometimes people uh, hashtag the the word trend. So let me see. Yeah, in some cases it works. Trends, trends twenty one, uh, trends two thousand twenty one. Even though we're not there yet, um, that happens. All right, cool. So can we talk a little bit about the automation that you were just showing, so that people understand what the power of that is and and why they need it? Yeah, I mean it's. it's... I mean, automation, I mean, that's kind of where we're going, right? You want to eliminate and then automate, right? Yep. So, so automation is just one component. It doesn't necessarily um, prevent you from doing any subsequent work, but it opens the door, right? So, so what, the way I like to think about automation, it doesn't take away from your genuine personality, but it at least it at least opens the door for you, so for you to then jump in and then be yourself and ask questions and stuff. So, I mean, automation is huge. I mean, we send out between fifty and sixty connection requests a day automatically on your behalf, and then when people reply, then you just jump on in. Perfect. So, what are you usually using the automation for? Like you just showed on mine that I'm using it apparently for recruiting. Thanks, Casey. Um, but how would other real estate agents use it for creating business opportunities for themselves? How would that look? Cool. So let me um, share my screen again and okay. I'll go through just one of the more, well, this is like, this is probably one of our, one of my favorite stories, right? So this is a gal, Emily, who's in Santa Barbara. 
Um, I just, so the automation component was, hi, Emily, nice to meet you. I see you're a fellow Santa Barbara resident. Looking forward to networking with you here on LinkedIn. So I'm referencing Santa Barbara. She connected. And then a couple hours later, I'm a local realtor. I wanted to introduce myself. I'm also a member of the local housing network. We can offer you know, closing cost rebates. We can give you up to $4,000 credit at closing. This is what we're offering because we're in a place where it's about a million dollar median home value. So we're offering a $4,000 credit at closing. Yep. You interested in grabbing coffee ne next week. Um, I'm buying, we can talk about your real estate goals. Then she goes, yep, uh, I'm back in town on the 30th and free to meet up. So from there, now it's on me or on you to then reply back to them and set the appointment. So the reason why I like this as an example is, is I met with her, right? Back in 2019. We then, and then this is my fault. We didn't, we, we could then kind of like lost touch. And then about like January of 2020, she reaches out saying that, you know, she wants to buy a home now. She came into some extra money and she wants to, you know, for, you know, as we ended up selling her $2 million property. Um, wow. All, and, and we had engaged on LinkedIn. She had then re-engaged with me, probably because she had been seeing some of my posting. And then we met up and sort of showed her a handful of homes and we closed the deal. So again, like we, we start, we use automation to like start the conversation and then you use your skills or whoever skills to then convert them to a sale. I love that, dude. I love that a lot. So then how do you, how would you nurture these people? Because you also said that you can export your connections. You can export their information so you can use it to contact them. What does that look like? Yeah. So there's a couple of ways. So I guess, I guess first, firstly, I mean, yeah, we can send you a, a download, a, a simple download of all of your LinkedIn connections and, and you should import them into your preferred CRM, whether it's, you know, follow up boss, Wilopo, PowerPoint, whatever it is, and put them on a newsletter, anything that you're, you're, you're working on. Like if you send out monthly newsletters about the market, put them on that. That's, that's, a, that's an email nurture. The other component we can do is we have a, a Zapier integration, which if you are savvy with the software, it's called, it's called Zapier. You can connect our system automatically with your preferred CRM. So a new connection comes in, we can zap them automatically into your, into your CRM of choice, and then you can nurture them that way. Um, <laughs> likewise, um, uh, you can do it on inbound messages. So an inbound message comes in, you can zap that into your, your preferred CRM. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but um, data is, is, is key. Dude, that's, that just shows the power of LinkedIn. I think one thing that you showed me early on in which I was, that's what really converted me over to, to LinkedIn besides the Google search, right? Um, was the ability for you to reverse prospect a certain group of people based on where they work or based on their profession, right? And I think the automation for that was so is so powerful that a lot of people don't use it. Can you show me how that works on the back end so people understand the power of, of LinkedIn to be able to reverse prospect? Because people are like, well, I want to I want to target doctors, Casey. I want to target police officers or fire people. Not fire people, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's um I think people are un unaware, which is normal. I didn't know about this a couple of years. So where ago. do we first of all, where do we go? What do we need? What is Sales Navigator? So Sales Navigator is this little icon up here. So if you don't already have Sales Navigator, you know, I think they offer a, a free trial. You can give it a shot. Um, you'll, you'll probably see like this little icon that says free upgrade to premium. You want to make sure that you, you select the one that says sales or sales navigator. That's what you want. Okay. Um, that'll bring you here. So this, this is sales navigator. And the reason why sales navigator is important for a couple things. So if you're using our system, um, you know, we send out so many invites a day. LinkedIn has restrictions on how many you send out per day. Having sales navigator, it increases that threshold that's permitted per day. So for for any intent purposes, you want that, and if you're going to be engaging on LinkedIn on a very regular basis. Um, but I think almost more importantly is the 
filters that you can use to, to yeah, reverse prospect people that you want to be reaching out to. So when I first start a um, prospecting list for our clients, first thing I do is I take out anyone who works in the real estate, if, if you're looking for simply buyers and sellers, um, commercial and let's say banking industry because no one likes to be reverse sold. So you can exclude certain industries. Then you can search for certain areas, like let's say Malibu, California. So these are people who are not in the real estate industry who work, in, who work or live in Malibu. You can then find the most experienced, 10 years plus experience. Um, and then you can do it, you can leverage it based on seniority level. So owner, yeah. partner, CEOs, VPs, directors, all the more affluent titles. Okay. So now you're like really narrowing into the most affluent individuals living in, living or working in Malibu. Okay. This is if you strictly want to just like find the most, the most wealthy. Arguably a more effective search, in my opinion, is, is doing your search based on um, similarities. So I, for example, I went to UC San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's geography for grad school. And so you can search for people who went to UC San Diego, who are not in the real estate or banking industry, who are very affluent, who live in your area. And the reason why that's good is because you're really trying to create the rapport with these people, mm -hmm. you're trying to get to know them, or you're trying to allow them to get to know you before you even talk. And so if you have the ability to go, hey, we both went to UC San Diego, or hey, we're both military veterans, or hey, we both worked in healthcare you know, previously, whatever you can do using these filters to kind of create that rapport and bridge that gap is very effective. Um, then you just start having conversations with people. You know, I'm a realtor, you know, I'm, I wanted to offer you a Go Gaucho discount or you can give me money back at the close of escrow. We can talk about some some IV stories or whatever it may be. So, uh, yeah, you, you, these filters are very powerful. They are, and that people people don't even realize they're there because they're behind the paid wall for LinkedIn, which is the sales navigator part. Um, I, once, dude, once you showed me this, I was like, "What? <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely amazing." Because then you can start creating automation specifically targeting those people that you're going to target, right? Yeah. That's the, that's the power of, of LinkedIn right there. So do you guys help with this part as my linked solution? We do. And so part of like the fun, I guess you could say, is really kind of unpacking our client's business and seeing what would be the most effective campaign. In fact, um, one of our recent clients who just signed up today, he's, he's French. Um, he's, he's from France. He's lived in the U.S. for like four, three or four years. And so what I did for him is I was looking for people who had their profile language set to, to French. And there's like 3,500 people that live in the LA area that have French as their profile language. Um, people who have a company that has France or French in it. So part of the fun is like digging into your business, seeing what we could do to help you create that rapport for these prospects immediately. Dude, I love that. All right. So what's some of, the, some of the success you've seen with that? Because I know agents are like, well, how long does this process take? What should I be doing when I have the connections? What does this look like? So on average, our clients are getting about 500 new connections a month, which then leads to a little over 100, 150 conversations. Um, and then which leads to between three and seven appointments a month. An appointment could be you know, a Zoom call, it could be a Calendly appointment, it could be a meeting, a coffee meeting. Um, those are kind of our monthly metrics. What we've seen in terms of production is our average client kind of like gets a deal more or less within his first three months. So someone get, either get, gets a listing or gets you know, um, a buyer's contract, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm but within the first three months. I love and, that. And what you, what you have to do in order to get that is just go on LinkedIn and respond to people. 
you know, have, have a conversation. Well, I think part of that, part of that is making it a routine too, man, because like you just told me that somebody messaged me on LinkedIn and I didn't see it. Right. That's because I don't typically gravitate to LinkedIn. Right. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't even have a LinkedIn uh, profile. That's all set. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you just, you just got, I mean, it, it, it's like anything else, right? I mean, if you, if you time block for, for cold calling, if you time block for, for emailing, if you time block for sending out cards, whatever it may be, just spend time block 30 minutes to an hour a day if you, if you can. 10 minutes is probably the bare minimum. Um, but if you can spend 30 minutes to an hour just engaging with people on LinkedIn every day, it will pay off in, in, in spades. I love it. All right. So how do we get a hold of you if we want you to run our LinkedIn we want you to post for us. We want you to create automation. We want to have you create more opportunities for us through people following us back or just even connecting. What does that look like, buddy? Yeah, so mylinksolution.com is our website. Um, I posted a link to our, our calendar um, in the group chat. I'll post it again. Um, I, I highly recommend if you have any, any questions at all, just like schedule a demo with our team. And we can answer all your questions, explain, you know, in more detail what we do. And we can like unpack what the best solution for you could be. So um, yeah, I would just schedule a demo. That's, that's ideal. All right. And then are you the one that, that uh, leads that demo or how does it work? Sometimes I, I did today because our salespeople are, are on vacation already, but um, for the most part, we have two stellar salespeople that kind of can help you out. I've been with us for almost two years now. So um, one's actually a licensed realtor. The other one used to work for other real estate companies. So, um, we can unpack things really well for you. I love that, man. All right. Well, thank you for being with us, Casey. You put up the link there, right? Cause I put it up on Facebook as well. If anybody has any questions, reach out to Casey through that link. And I've been with them for, dude, since you guys created the company, how long has it been? <laughs> Even before that, but yes. Uh -huh. Even before that, that's right. All, what, uh, how long have you guys had uh, my linked solution? It's been, I think, over, over two years now. Yeah. I love it. So Donna said, great information. Donna, thanks for joining us. I appreciate that comment. Uh, well, look, we're going to do this again in January. So let us know in the chat box what, what you want us to cover the next round. Uh, what about LinkedIn that you want us to cover? Is there something specific that you want us to to showcase this, is there anything that you want us to dive deeper into? What would that look like? I, I need to know in the comments so that Casey and I know what to talk about next, or else we're just gonna shoot the shit again. <laughs> Which isn't isn't that bad, Casey, because we went into some pretty cool stuff. I always I always look at this and I'm like, well, I'm not the greatest on LinkedIn only because I don't I allocate enough time for it, right? So I'm always looking at, well, what should we be posting uh, more religiously and I think that's often a question that isn't that is asked but never really processed so now that you guys are doing this more for us I'd like to go in and be like let's see what the content looks like look Amanda says increasing content engagement yeah so I think if we can showcase what content we should be posting like specifically I want to I want you to show me like seven to 10 different things we should be posting. And then not only how to post those, but also how to get more engagement from those, right? Maybe going in a little deeper as to what I was showing when we like comment and then message people so that they can engage in this stuff. What do you think of I, that? I, yep, I, I think that's a great idea. And and here's here's what, here, so here, here will be a little teaser for everyone to come back for that session. So okay, shoot. we're going to have a lot of data, right? So we, we just launched our content posting about a couple of weeks ago for all of our clients, hundreds of clients, right? So we're getting, and we're getting uh, metrics and feedback and data based on which of those posts are the most effective. We're, we're, we're doing A-B split testing. We have two groups of people. We're posting different content into, into both groups. So we're measuring which of, which of those posts are having the most engagement with people on LinkedIn. So by January, we will have a lot more information to share based on what sort of engagement is created. Also, as like a, as like a giveaway, um, we're creating like a posting content template folder on, yeah. on Canva, where you know, we're gonna be giving it away to all of our clients for free as part of our subscription.
but we can also potentially offer it up to webinar attendees um, as a way for them to log into this template folder and just basically download posting templates and then customize for themselves and post on their own. So, um, you know, the Ooh. teaser is come back in January for, for more data and then potentially receive a Canva template library for you. I like that. I like that. All right, man. Well, that's a good tease. I think we're going to hit it right on there if we focus on increasing the content engagement, like Amanda said. Uh, thanks, Patty. We appreciate you being on too. And for those of you that haven't signed up to take a look at this a little deeper, go ahead and click on that Calendly link that Casey put up there. Casey, how's the weather in Santa Barbara? It's nice. I feel like spring's here. Dude, it was the first day of winter yesterday. <laughs> I know. But it, it was hot. We went to the beach this weekend. It was, it was nice. And this is why people continue to move to California. I know. I know. And people are, people are moving out of California to, to go to Texas. But that means there's a lot more availability. So all you back from Michigan, come on over. Back and forth. Back and forth, baby. All right, Casey. Thanks so much. Again, it's my link solution. You can see in the back of the top there. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you again. All thanks. right. Thanks. Bye, guys.